Oh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome once again to the story behind the story. I'm your host, yes, indeed, Dr. A. Truat, coming to you live this week from my beautiful place here in Ogden, Utah. Yeah, I'm, I'm not traveling. I'm, I'm actually here in my office uh, sitting down to the computer this morning. My, my mainframe was working just fine, my primary computer where I come to you through Skype and then... 20 minutes before the hour, I went to turn it on, and there was absolutely the sky busted up, and the computer went dark, and I was completely hacked. I tell you, folks, it's amazing. I, I've been communicating with a number of people tonight, and um, I'm sure this topic of conversation always seems to um, start a rash of hacking problems, and I... I know, ladies and gentlemen, it's not coincidence, and please understand, I am absolutely not paranoid. Because, you see, when I start really delving into this topic of conversation, especially here in Utah, the powers that be, you see, seem to come out with messages. I I, I get uh, strange emails. I get strange phone calls. I get... Threats. I absolutely have gotten threats, physical threats. And uh, what's even more disgusting to me personally is they start uh, attacking my family. F- folks, two weeks ago on the show, I exposed for the full two hours the very real problem of child sex trafficking. I specifically pointed out who's responsible for it, the headquarters of it. But you see, the the big picture, the, the big reality, folks, if you want to know what's wrong, I mean, what's really wrong with America, this country, what's really wearing away the fabric that made America great, once again, to borrow the phrase from the Trumpster, Donald Trump. We want to make America great again. We've got to make America good again. We've got to root out the cancer. The so-called 1%, yes, it doesn't take much, folks. 1% of the elite of this country are involved in very, very, very dark practices. Yes. Let me tell you, folks, just as Jesus Christ is very much alive and well, and working in a different dimension to uh, help humanity. Make no mistake that the opposite number, Satan, is very much real as well. Very much so. And there are millions, yes, ladies and gentlemen, millions of people that have embraced Satanism in a very proactive manner. And that's the reality. The the majority of Hollywood elites, they're Satanists, ladies and gentlemen. There's the music industry that you hear with 440 hertz rock and roll music, country music. Ladies and gentlemen, it's all controlled at the highest level by this group of Satanists. Call them what you want to. Call them Illuminati. Call them Satanists. Call them Wicca, call them whatever you want, doesn't matter. They are worshiping and promoting the dark Lord. Now, I get people all the time saying, well, Dr. Rod, you can't talk religion on your radio show. There's time and place for that. Go to a Christian broadcasting network. That's probably my number one complaint that I hear from people emailing me. You know, frankly, I've just, I've, I've had so much trouble with my emails being hacked and and problems linking into my computers, I haven't even answered an email for over a month. I haven't even opened them up because I, I have about 4,000 emails a day. I can't, I'm in a week, about uh, 1,000, as many as 1,000 emails a day. And these are not junk emails. I have a really good sorter. I just can't keep up with them. I just flat out. I, I, I found that I was spending six to eight hours a day just going through emails. I can't do that. So those of you that are supporters, and, and uh, I've got a lot of uh, very loyal fans across this great country and across the world, I say thank you. But please understand I'm not answering emails. I just can't. I don't have the time anymore. 
I'm sorry to say that, and I'm not going to hire somebody to to go through them. I just I just have to communicate, and hope that you understand the lack of communication back. And please understand that's the way it is. But folks, listen. What uh, are we compiling the last three to four years of radio broadcasts? Dr. Ott, you've really gone kind of Bible-ish on us. You've gone, you've gone so far into the biblical right that you know you're losing losing credibility. That type of thing, folks. I, I only go there primarily because it's the only answer. When you dig as deep as I have into the underbelly of the beast, and I've been doing this for radio broadcasting for darn near 20 years, folks. I have interviewed Satanism. Satanists at the highest level, I have, I have scrutinized them, and I'm talking about re, repentant Satanists who have come to Christ. I have, oh my golly, over a dozen. I have chronicled on videotape. I have probably done more to expose this. I, I don't say this to brag because I'm not bragging, I'm just stating a fact than I know than any other radio talk show host that I know of. And I'm telling you folks, it's a huge, huge problem in America. Now, more and more in, in recent years, <clears throat> other, shall we say, investigative reporters have also delved into the subject and come up with their own conclusions, which which absolutely mirror and echo what I have been saying and reporting on for nearly 20 years, and that is that you want to fix America, ladies and gentlemen, you know, we don't need to sing God Bless America in the seventh inning stretch of Major League Baseball games. No, that's uh, that's well and good. That's all fine, but I'm going to reverse that. America needs to bless God. We need to understand that this is, first and foremost, a spiritual battle. Otherwise, nothing ever gets fixed. Nothing does. We'll get the same old garbage every year, each and every year we, and I say we, the collective consciousness of America, we'll just uh, forget, put it in the dustbins of our history and just forget about what has gone before. And so, folks, we get exactly what we deserve. We have two people now that's going to be vying that are now vying for the white house one of them will be seated and you know it doesn't really matter which which side of the counterfeit coin you look at you have to settle for one evil over the other and that's that's by design folks we we have the latest with donald trump a sordid video coming out where he bragged in 2005 or six about being able to quote grope women because he has wealth and power. And oh my goodness, all the women that I've talked to can't believe that they could ever, they thought they would vote for Trump, but now there's no way this monster is going to go there. So they got to vote for the woman. Oh my heavens. Ladies and gentlemen, how many women do you think Bill Clinton has, has groped because he has power? And how many women has Hillary Rodden Clinton, the Rose Law Firm Illuminati witch who's wanting the power it's not all in, her, all in her power to destroy those women. Now folks, that's the reality. Which is worse? A billionaire bragging about his ability to grope women and get away with it or <laughs> the evil sick, twisted wife who destroys the women that her husband has groped and has placed cigars in the most unlikely places, if you know what I mean, folks, and work as powerfully as she can to destroy those women that come forward, which is worse. I, 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 I submit to you, Ms. Clinton is 10 times worse. I, it's just it just blows it just blows my mind here in Utah. The 
largest uh, daily rag, the Salt Lake Tribune, formally endorsed Hillary Rodden Clinton, saying with headlines in the, pa- in the front lines, she's the most fit to be president. What does that say about the office of president? Yeah, well, she's, she's got the, the best backroom smoke-filled sleaze, the qualifizer. That's the reality. You know what the bottom line is, folks? Really, does it even matter anymore? Is America too far gone even for a Donald Trump to try and make her great again? That's the big question. And because until we really, and I say we collectively, we, the people, get a handle on the core root of the problem, it'll never change. The core root of the problem is, ladies and gentlemen, the number of practicing Satanists that are in control of this country. It's amazing. There's a gentleman who's written a number of books, has quite a blog. He's a, he's a Jewish fellow who has come to Christ, basically, and exposes a lot of the, the chicanery of the Jewish elite, the B'nai B'rith, the Illuminists that are is so much in control. His name is Henry Macau. Henry Macau did a recent series of interviews with a woman who calls herself Mary Ann. Now, I just say this, you see, because Mary Ann is, is revealing so many other things that, I've, that I have written in book form over the years, I've I've exposed this because I've I've interviewed myself a number of what they call high high priestesses of the Illuminati, the highest satanic order of the elite in America, and and so what Marianne has to say is really nothing new to me, but it, it's even Henry Mack, I was saying this is pretty outrageous. And indeed, it is. It's, it causes you know credibility to be questioned. But let me tell you, folks, the reason why this has gone so so long is because the mainstream media, first of all, ignores it, says it's too, it's just wild. Anybody who believes in this stuff has to be psychologically unfit, has to be dangerously wacko. Okay, that's the image that they put out, and of course. The very concept of human and child sacrifice in these satanic orders is so heinous that the natural impulse for most people is to say it's got, it, it can't possibly be true. can't possibly be true. But ladies and gentlemen, it is true. It happens eight times a year. Human sacrifices are offered on eight black Sabbaths, eight black masses during the calendar year. The very concept of this, ladies and gentlemen, the the Wicca wheel of the year, the satanic wheel of the year that outlines exactly what these eight black Sabbaths are their holidays. You know, and the whole reason why they conduct human sacrifice is for one reason, and that's one word, power. Because only when blood is released does the the demonic realm make its appearance, poke its head into this dimension of time and space we call reality. So we we talk about the machine, folks. We listen to the Pink Floyd song, The Machine, Welcome to the Machine. If you want to know what the gears are that drive the machine, well, this is it. This is the topic. This is where the rubber meets the road, okay? It's it's extremely serious, and it should be taken seriously by anybody and everybody that claims to be a Bible-believing Christian. The entire New Testament is, is, is about Jesus Christ. Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah, God incarnate, the man known as Emmanuel, 
in the book of Isaiah, God with us, coming here for a mission. And that one mission is very clear. It's to destroy Satan's power and kingdom. Now, if you don't get that, folks, you've missed the entire point of the New Testament. That's the super condensed Reader's Digest version, all right? Now, as we go through life, if you're alert and a vigilant Christian, you see this order of Illuminati putting their best prophets and prophetesses forward. We see and understand Hillary Rodham Clinton, the pupil of the teacher Saul Alinsky, in his book Rules for Radicals, in the which he wrote, and it was his coup de grace, the top book he could put put for his disciples out there, Rules for Radicals. He has a dedication in that front piece, the forward of Rules for Radicals, dedicating the book and all of its work to the ultimate radical who fought against the God of all creation and created a kingdom for himself, that being Lucifer, a.k.a. Satan, a.k.a. the devil. Folks, it's not something out of Hollywood fiction. Hollywood's done a very good job of wanting you to believe in all this scary Blair Witch projects that you see, all these cinematic productions you see there. They're just fiction. And if you believe they're real, you've got to be crazy. Mm -hmm. Tell that to Stanley Kubrick, may he rest in peace, when he (sighs) thumbed his nose at his Illuminati handlers in Hollywood and created the movie Eyes Wide Shut. That's exactly what's going on. It's not fiction, ladies and gentlemen. It's absolutely fact. Until you get a handle on that, well you'll never hope to be able to overcome it. Let's, uh, in the Old Testament, the one of the lesser prophets, a prophet named Amos, layman, he says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Well, it's the lack of knowledge and understanding that drives us straight down into destruction, folks. And that's why I do this radio show. I, I do a lot of soul, soul searching. And, and my wife says, why do you do this? Friday nights? It's our date night. She doesn't like it. She gives, you know, we've been doing it for over two years now with Revolution Radio. And bless her heart, she's had to live through me doing a daily radio show for over six years. And the central theme, I suppose, you know, sure, we do we do topics of health and how to to, to overcome poor health and, and make you as healthy as possible. We do shows on that, too. But the overriding theme for 20 years of radio broadcasting has been to expose the corruption, the cancer that's plaguing America, and that is the cancer of organized Satanism. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, it's real, it's in your face, and it's in the, in the town that you live in today. A shout out to Dave. I, I hope he's listening tonight. I uh, won't give his last name. Dave is, grew up in, in a place called Memphis, Tennessee. He's transplanted to Utah. He's become a very close and Good friend. He's an honest man, an honest seeker of Christ. I love him as a brother. And so, you know, <laughs> it's a lot of the things that, that, that Dave has learned, and I have learned from Dave concerning this topic, just continue to impress me. And and so Dave keeps his eyes out for interesting topics and discussions. So, so we presented today uh, a gentleman who's written a book. His name is William Ramsey. Mr. Ramsey will be my guest on the story behind the story next Friday and into the Halloween broadcast. All because, folks, you got to understand, this is their high time. Halloween is not a joke, okay? Sohain is what they call it in their, in their satanic calendar. October 31st is indeed one of their highest Black Sabbath ritual dates were... More children are offered as sacrifices any other day other than Beltane, May 1st. Folks, listen up. You've got to take notes, got to download this show with 
Mr. William Ramsey, the author, because we're going to be hitting this very hard. William Ramsey, I'm sure, is is uh, shocked by what he's found out in reading this the first quarter or one third of his book today. He is, I'm sure, stunned. He'll, he'll tell us first person next next Friday and the week after that. The book is uh, simply entitled. And if you want to. Uh, Check it out. I'm sure you can get a copy on Amazon or wherever uh, books are sold. William Ramsey is the author's name. The book is simply called Abomination, Devil Worship, and Deception in the West Memphis Three Murders Case. Now, the Mississippi River comes cuts across the the country and on the east side of the Mississippi is the state of Tennessee. You have Memphis, which is, again, a, a very powerful center of Illuminati in, influence. Mob, Jewish mob influence is huge there in Memphis. Memphis has degenerated uh, into a, a very dark city across the river west of Memphis, Tennessee. You have the town of West Memphis, Arkansas. What happened there in 1993 on May 5th, Cinco de Mayo, four days after Beltane, May 1st of 1993? It's murders that made headlines. I followed it. I actually reported on it myself in the and then mid-90s, when I started my radio broadcast, I was just starting out then, but I reported on them because, oh, my heavens, the the story is still ongoing. And, it, folks, here's, a, here's something to look at. Anytime you have celebrity influence that comes out with fundraising to try and make the public incredulous about the satanic ritual connotations. You can bet your bottom dollar that it is satanically inspired, okay? Whether it's John Benet Ramsey in Colorado, whether it's you name it, folks. There you know, there are these school shootings, these so many of them are tied to individuals with satanic ritual coven affiliations. So really what's going on here, what uh, what William Ramsey is is talking about, it really is the tip of the the ice the literal iceberg. You have to go deeper to understand the the length and breadth and depth of this problem plaguing not only America, but ladies and gentlemen, yes indeed, the world itself. On the back cover of the book we read this, abomination, devil worship, and deception in the West Memphis Three Murders provides a detailed, timelined analysis of the murder that shocked the nation, the heinous killing of three eight-year-old boys in West Memphis, Arkansas on May 5th, 1993. And here's the key sentence, quote, a wall of deception has led the American public to erroneously believe that the three men were falsely accused and convicted for the crime. Unfortunately, this is not true. You see, elitists have come back, millionaires have come back, and they put a, a, a defense fund together of millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars, to not only convince the public, but hopefully convince an impartial jury to retry the case and to get them off. See, the Illuminati, the Satanists at the highest level, they do take care of their own. The John Benet Ramsey situation is is a great p case in point. I was reporting on that for for years and years and years. And you know, yes, indeed, the investigators there in Colorado knew there were some some very occult underpinnings, but. They never brought those out in the mainstream media. They reported on them, but the mainstream media turned a blind eye. 
as they so often do in high profile satanic ritual crimes. It's just, it's just amazing. William Ramsey has also authored a book called Prophet of Evil, Aleister Crowley, 9-11 in the New World Order. Now, I haven't got that book. I'm sure it's, it's a good read, too. But, yeah, you see, who is Aleister Crowley, ladies and gentlemen? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, an occultist is a nice word for him. A high priest of Satan. Yeah, he's on the order of Joseph Smith of Mormonism. Yeah, folks. <laughs> People get upset when I say that, but I tell you, as an ex-Mormon who saw firsthand the cover-up at the highest level of, of Mormondom concerning satanic ritual abuse within Mormonism, I can tell you that's exactly what Mormonism is and has been from its very inception under Joseph Smith and Brigham Young. High-level Satanism masquerading as the Church of Jesus Christ. I mean, it's ultimate hypocrisy. Now you know, folks, why I get hate mail and death threats. And Yeah, well, you know, I only have to answer to one individual, and that's my Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the author of truth, folks. That's the reality. Christ is truth. And if you love the truth, honestly love and seek for the truth, you're honestly seeking for him. And that's not religion, ladies and gentlemen. That's just reality. Again, this is a spiritual battle. It's not a battle between flesh and blood. The apostle Paul, originally Saul of Tarsus, you see, found that out after a decade after his road to Damascus experience, you know, where the risen Lord came and that literally knocked him over the head, made him see the lights. You know, that's an amazing story. But you see, he finally realized that in the letters, he says, we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We don't. We don't fight against people. No, the battle, as Paul understood it, as I understand it, folks, we waged the battle against principalities and powers of the spiritual realm, the spiritual dimensions where the battle is placing. Because you see, in America and anywhere in the world, this globe, this I shouldn't say globe, this flat earth planet that we live on, ooh, there we go, I'm, I'm going to hell for that one. This, let's say, circular plane, that's the best way to say it. Because it's, it's circular, it's round, it's just not a spinning globe. That's what the reality is. Folks, listen, we're getting sidetracked. <laughs> the reality is, you see, everything that happens on a spiritual plane affects our physical plane, our emotions, our bodies, which are physical, our emotions, which are mental, and our spiritual plane. Folks, whether you like it or not, the reality is we are triune trinity individuals. We have mind, we have body, we have spirit. And when you ignore any one of those planes, you cannot be complete, you can't be healthy, you can't be well-rounded, you see. The adversary of God, the creator, wants nothing more than to short circuit the well-being of humanity. They want people to suffer. You see, that's, you know, misery loves company, and that's the reality. So let's go back to what I was talking about. Henry Macau's interview with, with Mary Ann is, is really quite an amazing story let me let me share this with you and again i want to i want to add comments because you see it's when we when we interview next week mr ramsey you know i think it'll help him to get a handle 
you know, on on how deeply this this does does go. So Henry Macau's website is is uh, really quite an amazing. Oh golly, let's let's see how we can. Yeah, I'll just go ahead to give the not the full interview, but absolutely just a, just a synopsis of it put out by Mr. Macau. Now, this was updated just uh, the spring, March 4, 2016, by Mr. Macau. And it's concerning Hillary Rodham Clinton. Now, Dr. Macau, Henry Macau, PhD, has written a lot about this. Uh, this Marianne is not her real name. She, she's, uh, that's a noom deplore. But here's what she has come out with lately. She says, quote, Marianne claims she was present when Vince Foster, remember remember Vince Foster and uh, who he was and his untimely death? Well, Vince Foster, you see, was, was a colleague of Hillary Rodham in, the, in Arkansas. Whitewater. Remember the scandal? I mean, everywhere, you, everywhere Hillary Clinton is, is gone, she has left a just an absolute crumbling trail of scandal. I mean, incredible, immoral scandal, illegal scandal. And, and talk about being bulletproof. You know, there's got to be a reason why she's so protected. And the reason here is, is put out by Marianne. Marianne claims she was present when Vince Foster was actually murdered in July of 1993. She says Hillary Clinton and, and Vince Foster were, quote, having a screaming match, verging on a brawl in his office at the White House. He had threatened to expose her whitewater dealings. She said she witnessed a Secret Service agent, quote, raised his gun and shot him. Vince Foster, point blank. So, Macau comes back to his 2008 interviews with Marianne as a reminder that Hillary Clinton is a high-ranking member of the Illuminati cult. Dr. Macau calls her also a criminal and a traitor, of course, but most of all, most of all folks, she is a very high-ranking Satanist who has participated at the highest level. Now, I have interviewed, and I have it on tape, with high priestesses here in Utah that independently tell the same story, where when Bill Clinton was president during the 90s, that Hillary would attend numerous Black Sabbath Rituals where children were were murdered and consumed. See, that's that's their sacrament. They consume the flesh and the blood. It's their communion to the Dark Lord. Except, it's real. Here's what Dr. Macau wrote back in December 2009, summing up: "Quote: The Illuminati sacrifice children in rituals eight times a year." declares Marianne, an Illuminati defector who had once been groomed for the, one of the highest political offices. She told me this in a, in a live interview, September 21st, 2008. September 21st, ladies and gentlemen, is the autumn solstice, the fall solstice. That's another high black Sabbath day. Just happens to be the same day in Mormonism that the so-called angel Moroni came to Joseph Smith and delivered the mysterious mystical golden plates, which became the Book of Mormon. Okay, September 21st. Check it out, folks. Dr. Macca writes, I am summarizing my 2008 interview here and another 14 months later. Much of what she says is simply outrageous, and so I cannot vouch for any of it, but it is consistent with the testimony of other defectors, such as Savali, Susan Ford, and Kathy O'Brien. 
and this is so true, Dr. Macca writes, the Illuminati's account on people to be incredulous. That's, after all, their protection. The more egregious their crimes, the safer they are. Again, I give you Eyes Wide Shut with Stanley Kubrick. Marianne sounds convincing to me, however. Why would anyone defy the most powerful people in the world? He also writes, both interviews, although 14 months apart, are remarkably consistent. People who invent stories rarely can keep track of them, especially 14 months apart. So September 21st of 2008 was the autumnal equinox. Marianne said that tens of thousands of children will be sacrificed on that night in Illuminati ceremonies. Folks, tens of thousands? Does that sound incredulous? Yes, but now when you realize there are tens of millions of children in the kidnapped black market snuff film industry that circles the world, tens of millions. So tens of thousands is a, is a small percentage, you see. Just understand the snuff film. We talked about that two weeks ago. The snuff film industry is real. It makes billions of dollars. And it's, golly, the headquarters is right here in America in, in California. So don't, why should this be so incredulous that you think tens of thousands of children killed, sacrificed on these eight Black Mass holidays. It's very real, folks. Marianne said the children are bred for the very purpose or are kidnapped. Satanists believe they gain power from killing. Okay, now that's a key point, folks. And Aleister Crowley, who said the most famous, do whatever thou wilt. I mean, that's the key thing, but the whole purpose of the Illuminati priestesses and, and what they do is to gain power. Power from where and from what source, you see? Power, power from the dark lord, the king, the prince of the power of the air, the kingdom of this world, the fallen kingdom of the earth. That's who gives the power. There's no more power-hungry witch in this whole Illuminati hierarchy than Hillary Rodham Clinton. She's power drunk. So Satanists believe they gain power from killing. Often they rip out the heart and eat a piece of it. They prefer it to be still beating. There are also sexual rituals involving young children. These are also believed to increase power and create fear and solidarity in their members. Illuminati members live double lives. At night, they engage in these satanic rituals eight times a year by day. However, they are found in all walks of life, <clears throat> medicine, education, psychology, therapy, banking, law, law enforcement, government, technology, military, charities, and organized religion. They are everywhere. The worst are in the news on a daily basis, posing as leaders. They are the elite of Freemasonry. They are generational Satanists, which means you have to be born into it. You can't join. Their children are evaluated and trained. Mormons and Nation of Islam have parallel beliefs, Mary Ann said. And she's absolutely right, folks. Muslims and Mormons, Muslim, Mormons, Muslim, Mormons, six letter words that begin with M. Yeah, same principles, same God they worship, whether it's Allah. Or Satan. That's just another name for Lucifer, Allah. And yeah, the priesthood of 
Mormonism is highly black magic influenced, folks. The world has been divided into ten regions, Marianne says. Different groups are in, are in control of North America. They are related to the crown heads of Europe. Yes, indeed. Many Jews have a very prominent role, but the Illuminati is not predominantly Jewish. That's well said, and she's right there. There are Muslim, Christian, Mormon, Wicca, pagan, and New Age groups. They all play a role, she said. Now, get this. She says that 80 to 90 percent of the House of Representatives and a full 100 percent of the Senate belong to the Illuminati. Now, folks, why is that so hard to believe? 100 percent of the Senate, every single senator? Yes, folks, because you say you don't ascend to that until you have the money, power, giving you the impetus. And, and every one of these Illuminati senators has a blackmail bag that they've been they're being controlled that way. Yes. Mary Ann said she was sexually abused by her own family from an early age. In spite or because of this, she was groomed to be a prominent political figure. She worked closely with many world leaders and was sexually abused by them. She was tortured when she refused to carry out assassinations. All large organized religions are infiltrated and controlled by the Illuminati, she says. The Vatican is rotten at the very top, and it always has been, folks. There's no doubt about that. The future Antichrist, she says, will be a pope. All countries, including Russia, China, and Iran, are ultimately controlled by the Illuminati. She says, you just don't say no to them. The Illuminati is behind the homosexual agenda, AIDS, and the so-called sexual revolution. They foster anything that is in rebellion against the Christian God. Now, see, that's the ultimate rebel. That's what Rules for Radicals, the book, the rebel Saul Alinsky. Now, let's look at who Saul Alinsky is. And no doubt he was, he was a Jewish fellow, high-level, high-level, Satanist, high-level communist. That is the mentor of Hillary Rodham before she even married Bill Clinton. She wrote her master's thesis, her papers on the life of Saul Lewinsky, Alinsky. Yeah, folks. This is the same book that, I, as I said earlier, is dedicated to the ult what, what Alinsky said was the ultimate rebel, Lucifer himself. Folks, just because you think this is outrageous doesn't mean it isn't real. Now, let's talk a little bit about Solinsky and and there's 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 been some in, investigative reporters. There's a website called Charisma News that has a good good uh, expose on Saul Alinsky's relationship with Hillary Rodham. Crazy, but it's true. There's, let me just read this in its entirety because it's a good text. Saul Alinsky established the ground rules for modern-day liberal so-called community organizing during the culturally explosive 1960s and early 70s. And one of his most engaged students was Hillary Clinton. The Alinsky-Clinton connection has been a popular target of conservative commentators for years, ever since her senior thesis at Wellesley College was made public. In public, she credited the man who in large part converted her from the, quote, Goldwater Republican 
of her youth into the liberal, socialist, progressive, we know today is now well documented. In 2014, the Washington Free Beacon obtained copies of previously unpublished correspondence between Clinton and Alinsky. The two had remained in correspondence even after she moved on to the Yale Law School. And he had advised her there on organizing campus activism. On July 8, 1971, the then 23-year-old Clinton, who was living in Berkeley, California, and was interning at a left-wing law firm, wrote a letter to Alinsky that paints the relationship in an entirely chilling light. Quote, she writes, quote, When is that new book, The Rules for Radicals, coming out? Or has it come and I somehow miss the fulfillment of Revelation? Revelation with a capital R. That's what she wrote July 8th, 1971. And she didn't call him Mr. Alinsky, dear sir. No, it's, it was Saul. First name basis, Saul. Now, Saul Alinsky was, again, organized and, and funded at the Crown with the Crown Jewish family. Again, Saul Alinsky's Jewish. The, the Crown family, the I mean, these are the you, you trace the money, whether it's the the Chinese communists, whether it's again, the communists of of Pol Pot, the killing fields of Cambodia. You follow the money for, you know, putting in regime change where communism is the result. You 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 follow it to Chicago's Crown family, and so here is here is Sololinsky living here in Chicago, being funded by the same group of Jews, wealthy left-wing, progressive Jews. Then you have, of course, the right-wing Jews of uh, the Zionist movement that are the Goldwater or, or Goldman Sachs group of New York, okay? But they're just, they're just different, again, the cods of the same corruption. So here's... So here's Saul Saul Alinsky staff headquartered, headquartered in Chicago. Guess guess you know, guess where Saul, guess where Saul was, was in 1971. Could answer, answer, answer her letter. Her letter. Yeah, yeah. Saul 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 was, was, was on a trip to China. 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 What was he doing? Was he doing China? China? So hop so hop and hopping with Mao. Mao, Mao boys. boys. Yeah, yeah. So Saul 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 was on a trip to China. What was he doing? Was he doing China? China? So the yeah, the represent representative of the, the communist Jews is in, in red China, China. And, and so, so Georgia, Georgia Harper, Harper Solomonsky's personal secretary, secretary, wrote her a quick reply, and this is what again this is this is uh, reported on by the Washington Free Beacon. Georgia Harper writes back saying, "Quote." Since I know Saul's feeling about you, I took the liberty of opening your letter because I didn't want something urgent to wait for two weeks until he gets back, she wrote. And I'm glad I did. Clinton's curious turn of the phrase, quote, fulfillment of revelation, revelation with a capital R, okay, takes a much more sinister connotation when applied to the context of Alinsky's dedication page in the book Rules for Radicals. Keep in mind, this was his last book and the culmination of his entire life's work, published less than two years before he died, and let me say went to hell. Here's what he wrote, folks. You think, it for your, think, of, think if it's for real or not, okay? Solinsky wrote, quote, lest we forget at least 
an over-the-shoulder acknowledgement to the very first radical. The very first radical. From all our legends, mythology, and history, parenthesis, and who was to know where mythology leaves off and history begins, or even which is which, parenthesis, the first radical known to man who rebelled against the establishment and did it so effectively that he at least, at least won his own kingdom, hyphen Lucifer. That's the dedication page, ladies and gentlemen. The year after this book was published, Rules for Radicals, of which Hillary Rodham was such a big fan, you see. The next year, in one of his final interviews, Saul Lewin Alinsky said, quote, hell would be heaven for me. See, folks, and I, you know, I, I watched the Republican convention. I, I did. I'm, I'm sitting there just seeing what, what, uh, what, if anything, I could learn about Donald Trump. I was shocked when, when I listened to Ben Carson's speech. You know, did you remember seeing that? Did you watch as I did? Here's, here's Dr. Ben Carson in his Republican convention speech. Here's how he said it. Well, here's what he said in that quote. Now, one of the things that I have learned about Hillary Clinton is that one of her heroes, her mentor, was Saul Alinsky. And her senior thesis was about Saul Alinsky. This was someone she greatly admired. And let me tell you something about Saul Alinsky, Carson said. He wrote a book called Rules for Radicals. It acknowledges Lucifer. The original radical who gained his own kingdom. Now think about that. This is our nation where our founding document, the Declaration of Independence, talks about certain inalienable rights that come from our Creator, a nation where our Pledge of Allegiance says we are one nation under God. Here's Hillary Clinton and her mentor, Roma. Think about that. Folks, we'll take a break. We'll come right back with the second hour of the story behind the story. Don't go away. I'm your host, Dr. H. Ruad. We'll be right back after these messages. Please do do. No! Oh, I'm sorry you're having Come on! Trouble. My I'm kids sorry are starving! <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to Revolution Radio. Here at Revolution Radio, we believe in freedom of ideas, freedom of speech, but above all, we believe in freedom of existence through self-reliance. This station is 100% listener-supported, and as a fundraising promotion, I have a kick-ass free gift for a $100 donation. 35,000 seeds. 25 years in the freezer. Long-term storable, 54 different varieties. So if food prices go crazy... The shit hits the fan, or if you just want to save tons of money every year by creating your own food like I do, grab our seed pack special. Just look for the banner on the homepage at freedomslips.com. Don't be a statistic. Don't be part of the problem. Be part of the solution. We need, as humans, to start taking care of ourselves and not depending on the mega courts to provide unhealthy, nasty food. Included in this package is also a DVD with 900 survival and off grid living documents and the offline home canning how to do everything website all on the DVD. So when you're growing all that food, you know how to can it, store it, preserve it, etc. with all these documents. So thank you for tuning in to Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. I hope that you will pick up this package and start learning to be free. Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, where information never sleeps and freedom is one seed that needs to be planted. What do we do in life? It goes in eternity.
Yes, folks, welcome back to the story behind the story. I'm your host, Dr. A. True. Yes, again, this is Revolution Radio you're listening to tonight. Totally and completely run by you, the listeners' contributions. There is, There are no corporate sponsors. There are no advertisements. The station either runs or it falls, depending on your contributions, ladies and gentlemen. So please, if you haven't already, take the time and... Go onto the website, click the button, offer a, a gift, and again, as you understand, there's always something new that uh, Nighthawk and the others uh, that run the station so admirably will give you for just your donation. They don't expect just to get nothing, something for nothing. They'll give a little gift. So please, folks, we do appreciate your support financially. Got to have it. It's got to be done. So again, each and every show we do ask you to donate. If you find this to be a show that uh, you want to share with others, again, sign up for the archives. Give the audio track of this out to, to your friends and neighbors. Yeah, it, it, folks, it's it's not a happy conversation. It's not uh, Pollyanna in the, in the woods singing Sound of Music. This is important information for you to get a gris, grip, grasp on. And I don't care whether you're religious or irreligious. I don't care if you believe or not believe. If you want to have a better life, you want to make this world a better place, you've got to understand the evil that is very real. You know, and, and golly, just, just go walk into your local friendly Walmart and or any store, really, any big box store, and you see all these Halloween decorations. They get more and more macabre every year. I mean, you just get they get weird chillingly weird so i you know as we as we do the the next two weeks interview with author william ramsey again shout out to dave and and his connections done a great job in connecting with mr ramsey for and on behalf of the show with just thank you david for that uh golly you know we have to look at the end of october every year to me is it's a time of of sadness in a lot of ways. As you see the, the trees shedding the leaves. We're, we're going into a, a time of, of decay, a time of sleep, a time of, of death, if you will. And that's what this whole worship of the Wheel of the Year is all about, why October 31st, this Black Sabbath is so important. And folks, Last it was it's now it's been almost two years ago in, in the spring of 2014. My sweetheart and I went on an extended trip to Israel, Palestine. Okay, and it was amazing to go in the company of a of an archaeology team there and review some of the sites that are not really seen by most tourists. There's a an incredible um, ruin there in Palestine. I, I hate to even say the word modern day Israel because it's really not. It's Israel is that's a whole other story, okay? But Palestine, there's a place called Gezer. It's it's referred to in the Old Testament. It's a real place. It's not fiction, folks. It's not mythology. It's real. The archaeological team that explored and dug into Gezer were shocked, and yet you can't really find much about it in archaeological journals because, you see, it's too embarrassing for those who want you to believe that the Bible's myth. 
Okay, Gezer is one of the cities that were put to the torch by the armies of Joshua in the Old Testament. Well, what they uncovered in Gezer was it was a hotbed of human sacrifice, child sacrifice, the worship of the false god of this world, Baal, Baal, Allah, Bala. Mormonism's god is Baal. They're Baal worshipers. They have real Baal movements in the world today still. So we're talking about archaeological proofs, folks, of children's children's remains being placed in in these pots. And we're talking tens of thousands of children. The evidence is un, undeniable that was uncovered. <laughs> you see, the the ancient the ancient sacrificing and consumption of of children's flesh, putting the children to the fire, as the book of as the different uh, Old Testament books attest, and what Christ Himself declares to be the most abominable and heinous of all outrages against the Creator God Himself. You see, this has been going on for thousands of years. It's not something just new. It's not some new craze. But you see, the, the dangerous is to think it's just harmless. The dangerous thing that that sending your kids out trick or treating, or you know, going to a Halloween party and and having a few drinks and making yourself a little crazy on October thirty first to the first of November is totally fine. It's not going to harm your harm your spirit or your soul. That's the danger because it definitely is folks i'm here to tell you to wake up why is it why is it that we have elections the first tuesday in november following some sohain also known as halloween do you think that's just a coincidence in the illuminati con control plan i want to just spend the next hour uh, again before we get uh, an interview mr ramsey to understand the underpinnings and the history of of this one of the highest black sabbath days coming up this october 31st now to me when i hear the word hollow hallows hollow Ian, the even eve or night of hollows all else you know you might you might go back to the jk rowling's harry potter stories the deadly hollows Okay, uh, Rowling is a witch, folks. She's she is a Satanist, and she wrote these things, and she's she's hooked a generation of 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 adults and kids into thinking Harry Potter's this grand thing to do. It's very dangerous, folks, and so a lot of people, a lot of children especially, are just because of of Rowling's books, you see, are experimenting with spells and. Magic, magic with a K. Alistair Crowley called his work magic, ending with a K, to differentiate it between magic tricks you see in parlors and magic shows in Las Vegas, right? Magic is invoking a very real power, you see, that cannot and should not be taken lightly. And when I talk about exposed Mormonism, I have a lot of Mormon apologists that's, that, you know, there was there's a a book written by uh, the ex-BYU, Brigham Young University, historian, a guy named Michael Quinn. The book is, was, I have it in my library. It's a stunning book that led me out of, helped me, lead me out of Mormonism. It's called Ma Mormonism and the Magic World View, where he, he, he gives total and documented pictorial evidence of Joseph Smith's magic, black magic practices to gain the faculty of Abrak, the faculty, you see, of the Dark Lord. That's the priesthood. Now, people in Mormonism say, well, so what? There's, there's good magic and there's bad magic. There's white magic and there's black magic. And that, oh my goodness, rationalization is, that's crazy talk. There is no such thing as white magic. You cast spells to do good. Well, you're 
you don't, don't think for a minute that Allah, Baal, doesn't give good gifts. He does. He, can, he heals sick people. He does all manner of good things. He, he gives riches. Just like the darkest, most evil dawn of organized crime does good things too to, to appear charitable and nice it's window dressing well all and well this money is being made by prostitution and snuff films and murder and satanic ritual this is the reality folks window dressing boy the mormon churches is, is and other organized religions are so they're, they're put on so much good window dressing. Look, we're such family oriented. We're such good. We do so much good for the fabric of, of the family. We promote the family. This, Folks, there's no. The mafia are greatly family centered. I mean, the family is everything in mafia. Don't be fooled. So, hollows, all hollows is. Hallows is a, is a satanic ritual, folks, where where they enter in, you know, the veil between the spiritual world, the prison, if you will, of of Satan and his demonic underlings. Are very, it's very thin at that time. It's again when all of nature goes from life into death on that solstice time. That movement, indeed, most leaves are shed and the trees especially in the northern hemisphere, and we enter into a death phase. Now, as I said with the, the ruins of, of the biblical town of Gezer, we see that uh, the surviving cult practitioners of, of the ancient times, they, they moved to the land uh, northward. They, they began to practice their, their craft in the British Isles, became known as the Druids. Originally, the Druid University that was there were were very gifted, deep, and wonderful spiritual people. The infiltration, however, the Druids that began to worship Mother Earth, they began to worship Gaia, the the feminine deity, and of course, bow worship became part and parcel of their existence. It wasn't always so, but it became very much so. But, so Druidism is the very practice of Halloween began. Halloween, All Hallows Evening. Now, that is the old, oldest, darkest priesthood the world has ever known, folks. And yes, it comes with one desire, those who want to seek earthly wealth and power turn to this because there is a very real source there for power. And if you got people like the like Witch Clinton, Witch Rodham Hillary Clinton, she's going to be seeking power. She's going to be deeply involved at the highest level with this. Now, in the satanic holidays. There's two that are the most powerful for them. There's Beltane, what's known as Beltane, which is May 1st, which is where spring begins. They have, again, the fertility rituals and rites on Beltane, the dancing around the phallic maypole, all of this then. May, May 1st is the birth of, of communism. Communism, communists worldwide celebrate May 1st is the origins of the Communist Party worldwide. That's May 1st, which is the opposite, you know, end of the whittle of the year. The Sohain, as it's called, or Halloween is October 31st. The night of All Hallows Eve is October 31st. Sohain itself is November 1st, the next day. So you see, the birth of summer is Beltane, the death of summer is Sohain. The most powerful of all is Sohain, according to authors who have written authoritatively and, and correctly on the subject. Now, 
again, I, I, I've been accused by when I talk about these things, I've had incredibly corrupt people say, see, listen to him. He's, he's, he's a Satanist. He's telling you all about it because he knows all about it. He's part of it. Oh, please. Because you study it out and understand the enemy doesn't mean you are the enemy. Okay? I just say this because I've read... And studied the studied it so I get a handle on it, and I'm sharing it here with you folks. The writings of um, of individuals concerning Halloween. Let me just share it with you, folks. The the Celts, the <sighs> Ireland, Scotland, English, the Celts were often victimized by these satanic hordes, the Druids, as they began, you know, in, in about the first to second century AD. You know, and, and I'll give credit to the Romans for this. The Rome, you know, Roman soldiers came in when they, they did more than anything to, to wipe out the, this uh, incredibly dark cult. The Romans did, did a great job of that. I, I'll give them credit for that, okay? the the Celts were 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 frightened uh hide behind their doors they would carve pumpkins and put them out to basically have them pass them by there's a a book written by David Skull entitled Death Makes a Holiday the Cultural History of Halloween that I've read. I mean, it's just wow. I'm mean, reading that uh, as a Christian. I'm just just shocked at uh, the origins of of Sohain of Halloween. <sighs> All histories of Halloween inevitably wind back to the ancient Celtic festival of Sohain. The see, the Celts were were those who. You either participated or you were a victim of it. Okay, it's a it's an amazing reality. The desire of the practitioners then and now is to turn the night of October thirty first on the calendar year to become hell on earth, to reek from what they call quote the deepest hell. And let make no mistake, folks, their most their most repulsive activities that are in this book, the history of Halloween, is the human sacrifices of children on this night. It's just a it's tragedy that that you have these little little ones dressed up as whatever they want, you know, whether it's a an action figure or some ghost or goblin or whatever to go around and knock on doors to get candy sugar sugar laden which i mean as these kids consume this candy they <laughs> it affects them spiritually and as well as physically folks sugar is toxic one of the most toxic poisons on the planet and yet that's the celebration so many i mean Tons and tons and tons of ca- of of sugar is consumed on this night of the deepest hell. Isn't that just coincidental, right? National Geographic. I have I have this this uh, in my collection. National Geographic article, May of nineteen seventy seven, pages six twenty five to six twenty six. Halloween did a story on this the Celtic rituals Halloween the that was the eve of Sohain and I quote firstborn children were sacrificed Sohain Eve or Hallows Eve was a night of utmost dread and danger this is National Geographic ladies and gentlemen what would these uh Satanists do during this night, they would actually drink their victim's blood and eat their flesh. Yes, that's reality. It happened then, it's happening now, and you can take it to the bank, ladies and gentlemen. Hillary Clinton does it every Halloween night. Take it 
to the bank. It's signed, sealed, and delivered. You heard it here on this show. They, the Satanists, this is from Harper's Encyclopedia of Mystical and Paranormal Experiences, page 167, quote, They, the Satanists, sacrifice victims by first shooting them with arrows, then impaling them on stakes, stabbing them, slitting their throats over cauldrons, and then drinking the blood as it was getting... They, they boiled the blood. They made it hot. Hot-blooded. See, check it and see. That's where it comes from, ladies and gentlemen. The hot blood. I kid you not. Pliny the Elder, the, the Roman historian, in his book Natural History, documented this as the, as the Roman centurions uncovered it. Get this. Pliny's, in, Pliny's book is recording Natural History. Pliny wrote, quote, we, Therefore we cannot too highly appreciate our debt to the Romans for having put an end to this monstrous cult. This is the cult of, that was prevalent in Europe, in the areas of Gaul, the Celtic areas of France. Whereby to murder a man was an act of the greatest devoutness and to eat his flesh most beneficial. Again, Pliny, the Elder Natural History Book. The Satanists, you say, at the time, and they to this day, counted it as an honorable thing to eat their father's flesh and perform incest with their mothers and sisters. Strabo, in his book Geography, writes, quote, since they are man-eaters as well as heavy-eaters, and since further, quote, they counted an honorable thing when their fathers die to devour them and openly to have intercourse, not only with other women, but also with their mothers and sisters. See, so this is the history. So why do we celebrate it with so much fanfare across every 50 states of this union. What about Beltane? Now, the, the word Beltane literally means Bel, Baltane, the fires of Baal, Bel, B-E-L or B-A-L-L, -L, same thing, fires of Bel. Bel, you see, is the same god in the Bible called Baal, found over... 80 times in my King James Bible word search. You see, the God of the New and Old Testament condemns Baal worship more than any other false idol or God that you could ever worship. There was, on the nights of, of Beltane and also on All Hallows' Eve, the fires of Baal, would would go uh, children again sacrificed and consumed blood put into the cauldron and consumed hot heated hot oh my goodness yes so Halloween folks is is modern day bow worship nothing nothing less than that the so again going back throughout recorded history from the annals of the Roman Empire down to the history books. It's, indeed, it's chronicled, it's real. It happens you know, in Palestine in, in the 4th and 5th centuries B.C. and into present time. It's still going on. It's never ceased. So why do you say that you know, it, it doesn't happen? See, that's again conditioning by the press, the media, the political correctness. You see, all it is, you see, Baal is, is another synonym. It's another word for Satan, a.k.a. Lucifer. Same individual. All customs 
that we celebrate today had their origins in ancient Baal festivals. Everyone. Now, there's a another book on Halloween that I took. Uh, I bought this many years ago. I have it on my library shelves. I I I've underlined some of the the most egregious uh, quotes there. The book is called. Uh, Halloween, an American holiday, and American history. Written by Leslie, a man named Leslie Pratt. Here's, here's the best quote. Halloween begins well over 2,000 years ago in the British Isles. Here, we find the holiday stripped to its most essential element. A night when certain tribes communed with the spirits of their ancestral dead. These grand and glorious pagan celebrations were eventually assimilated by the Roman Catholic Church. Rather than extinguish all old customs, the church leaders simply provided Christian versions of them from the Middle Ages on, we have thus All Saints Day and All Souls Day simply replace the ancient Celtic celebrations of the dead. See, the Catholic festival called All Saints Day was originally known as All Hallows Day with the word hallow replacing saints. The day before All Hallows Day, which is October 31st throughout all of history, was recognized as All Hallows Eve. Eventually, All Hallows Eve then became Hallows Eve, Hallow Even, Hallow Ian, and ultimately today's word, Halloween. Yes. A perverse and, uh, to me, most blasphemous twist to uh, the Halloween night concerns the name itself, Halloween. Do you realize the English word hollow actually, in the biblical sense, means holy, sanctified, or consecrated? The popular, you know, if you, in, in Matthew the book of Matthew in the Bible, chapter 6, verse 9, that's the Lord's Prayer, as is known today. In the original Greek translation, is absolutely correct. It begins, quote, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, or holy, sanctified, consecrated is your name. The label hallow belongs to God, the Creator, the Father. Hallowed be thy name. Christ said it best. That's Christ speaking that prayer, the Lord's Prayer. You see, so Halloween has become a night sacrificing young children to the worship of Baal in these secret occult ceremonies. So why is, you see how, how blasphemous it is that the name of history's most hellish night October 31st, glorifying death and hell has upon itself God the Father's holiest name of hallowed. Hallowed be thy name, Christ said in the Gospel of Matthew. Wow. We see in the Old Testament in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12, where this Lucifer figure, this ultimate Rebel, the ultimate radical, according to Skolalinsky, is Isaiah says he wants to be like the Most High. He wants to take the name upon himself of the Most High. So this is, again, why it's called Hallowed Eve. Oh, my goodness, where, you worship, where these people worship the Dark Lord and say he's hallowed. My goodness. Now, 
following, you know, if you if you want to know what's going on, it's you know, it's best to to go to the sources that are inside to write about them. I mean, yeah, folks, I have read the Satanic Bible by Anton LaVey just to see what it's all about, to understand it. I don't believe I've been I'm shocked by it. I have read the Babylonian Talmud and I've gotten rabbinical curses on my head because I'm 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 not Jewish, you see, and I'm I'm a goyim, I'm a human cattle. I'm not supposed to read their sacred texts, and so I've been given Yiddish curses on my head. And I said, "Well, I'm sorry. I'm just I'm learning about it." See, I've I've read the Quran. Doesn't mean I'm a Muslim. Okay, I've read these books, and I've as a study guide to see. I read the Book of Mormon. Many times. Doesn't mean I'm a Mormon anymore, you see. I want to make that very clear. When you so I've I've read the book Raven Wolf put out by she's a practicing Satanist slash Wiccan. And they want you to believe the Wicca is not satanic, folks. Believe me, it is. Oh my goodness. Wiccans are a branch of Satanism. And if you don't think, if you're practicing Wicca and think you're just an earth based religion, you are sorely deceived, folks. Ravenwood calls Sohain or All Hallows Eve the witch's new year. It's the most powerful, she says. And, and, and LeVay and others have said the same thing. It's, it's the primary Black Sabbath quote from which all other Sabbaths flow. All Hallows Eve is the New Year. It's where all others flow from. Now get that. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Right? Author Jerina Dunwich, the pagan book of Halloween. Again, she's a pagan writing about the history, I mean, it's, it's there, page 120, quote, Halloween is one of the four major Sabbaths celebrated by the modern witch. Quote, and it is by far the most popular and the most important of the eight that are observed. Witches regard Halloween as their New Year's Eve, celebrated celebrating it with the most sacred of rituals. Now, here's what Anton LaVey writes about it in, in the Satanic Bible. Quote, After one's own birthday, the two major Satanic holidays are Walp Walpurgisnacht, which is also Beltane, May 1st, and Halloween. On the Church of Satan's website, Satanic High Priestess Blanche Barton Crows about Halloween says this, and I quote, It, Halloween, gives even the most mundane people, even the most mundane people, the opportunity to taste wickedness for one night. Whether they know it or not, they have a chance now to dance with the devil himself. Satanists all over the world meet in small groups on this night. And Halloween's 500 years hence to raise a glass in honor of the infernal hosts. You get the picture, folks? I, I, can, I can literally go on with this information for hours it's 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 crazy all of the the information i've read because I, I i i wanted to know 15 years ago what's all this about i wanted to find out because i'm as i'm researching and reporting satanic ritual abuse and children being sacrificed on these nights is it real is this is just uh, these interviews i've had with these high priestesses and, uh, and videotape their testimonies? Is it real? I, I, I didn't want to believe it was real. I thought these women were crazy. I really did. This is, could this 
and if if it's if it's really true and really happening, my goodness, this world is a, is terribly fallen and a, and a terrible place to, to live. And so, you see, when you find out, as I did, that it's real and happening, because of all of this supporting and documented evidence that it is, and then you, again, look to the sources I've just referenced earlier about Saul Alinsky and and who the first ultimate radical was in his mind, you see. Then you understand these are these people are disciples of that false god. And so the only thing that's logical then is to say that how do you make a difference against their evil? The only way you can make a difference, folks, is to make an alliance with their enemy, which is real too. You see where I'm going with this? It's just logical. It's a logical flow. It should be logical. A lady named Johanna Meckelson came to Christ. She's, uh, she, she toured the country for years exposing the agenda. She's, she had an unfortunate accident. I think she was murdered per se. Her book that she wrote is simply called Like Lambs to the Slaughter because she says people just don't know what they're doing. They're ignorant. They're, they're lowing like, like innocent lambs before their shearer, before they're, they're being slaughtered and they don't even know it. So she, she says Halloween is, is the number one prime recruiting night and season for Satanists. Oh, we had so much fun at that Halloween party. We actually brought out a Ouija board, and you know what? We had some weird things happen. We had the lights flicker. We had the window shades rattle. We had a movement come through our whole house, and by golly, there's power there. It woke me up. I want to join in to make this power part of my life. Folks, it's real. Oh, but you know, it's okay to carve a pumpkin to put a witch on your front door. It's okay to turn your front yard into a cemetery with headstones and, and have a demon overlooking them. It's okay. It's just it's just harmless fun, right? No, folks. Witches are indeed real. They're the queen of Halloween. That's what they that's where they're honored. You know, the the magic kingdom in of, of Disneyland. I mean, you go down, oh my golly, I went in October to Disneyland and just was stunned with how, how perfectly well Disneyland honors that uh, dark night. Folks, look at the what the meaning is of the carved jack-o'-lantern pumpkin head. The smiling jack-o'-lantern is the king of Halloween. If if the witches are the queen, the jack-o'-lantern, as most historians will tell you, the reason why it's even called jack-o'-lantern, there's a, there's a fellow that was actually in, in the history named Jack, who conjured, conjured the devil, the devil Satan Satan himself, and according, according to the story goes, trick the, trick the devil and he'll steal soul. soul. No, but no, no, the, no, the going back, going back to the back angels, to the Celtics. You see, they, they, had, they had the highest, highest regard, regard and honor for a severed, severed human head, head and head, and, and, and in the end, the cultish condition, you see, the the reason for the guillotine is to sever the head of head weekly. There's, there's the severed head is a symbolic jack o' lantern itself. Here again is National Geographic, the same edition, May 1977, page 603. The human head figured prominently in occultic Celtic life. It was a trophy, a charm, an ornament. The Celtic warriors hung enemy heads on their houses. It shows a prowess. Now the Druids, believing 
the head was a harbor of the soul, placed these skulls and sanctuaries to ward off the evil. My goodness. It's believed that the faces, rather than other images or symbols, were carved into the pumpkin because they gave the jack-o'-lantern the look of a head. The Celts of ancient times believed the head was the most sacred part of the human body, for there it housed the person's immortal soul. But here it is, folks. The Culture History of Halloween, again, page 38. And David Scowl's death makes a holiday. Quote, the jack-o'-lantern is generally presented in its traditional form as a festive euphemism for the death's head. The triangular nose hole and the rictus grin being the dead giveaways. Carved and illuminated by a candle. The historical, this goes back thousands of years, folks. They are completely symbolic of death and the opening to the spirit world. So there we go, folks. It's, it's, it's not harmless. In the pagan book of Halloween, records, some say that, that indeed Halloween brings out the most evil side of human nature in certain individuals. The number of vandalism acts committed each year on Halloween certainly seems to support this. Indeed, and I quote now from the same book, the pagan book of Halloween, Halloween has always been a night of perversion and inversion, a night where misrule rules and decadence masquerades as decency. Halloween's best-kept secret is its romantic love affair with homosexuality. Halloween has historically been the golden key that unlocked the homosexual's closet of perversion. Halloween's spirit of inversion bestowed the homosexuals one utopian night to publicly flaunt their decadence and perversion. Again, this is going back back thousands of years, ladies and gentlemen. It's just not modern times. This is, again, historical paganism on this night. So there you go, folks, the ultimate, you know, the ultimate <laughs> radical. And let me just, uh, uh, again, parallel what Saul Alinsky wrote in his book, Rules for Radicals. Well, what is a, what is a free radical as terms in, human, in the human body? See, if it, free radical is simply an oxygen molecule now, oxygen's a good thing, right? We have to have oxygen that to, to survive. The cells need to have it. We need to breathe it. Blood needs to carry oxygen to the brain for our brain to function, to, for life to come, because life is oxygen. But see, when, when you invert oxygen, inversion, what happens is you take away electrons, life-giving electrons, and the oxygen becomes what's called a free radical. What does a free radical do? Well, it attacks healthy cells of the body and, and destroys them to gain electrons. What is the result of heavy free radical damage at the cellular level in humans? Six-letter word, folks. Starts with a C. Cancer. I started out this broadcast tonight by telling you that uh, Satanism is the cancer of America as being great and good. Whether it's America or any nation, they're, they become great because they are predominantly good. Do the right things, folks. It, be, it usually is, be, is rewarded. You do, you do indeed reap what you sow. I believe that's a true statement. You sow goodness, you're going to reap goodness. For the most part. Sure, there's exceptions to every rule, but that's reality. If you want to go down and to become depraved and decadent and have disaster, if you want to have America become an absolute conquered nation and uh, you know destroy this nation, you, you, you give eight 
four years of Hillary, I'm telling you, watch what happens. She makes Obama look like a saint. And that's saying something, folks. Put a put a head witch on the throne and see what happens. I'm just I'm just telling you, the lesser of lesser of two evils. I'm not a Trump fan either, okay? I the man is as dangerous as well, but I'm telling you, you know, we have to to stand as a nation on on, on principles of goodness and Again, that means, again, Christian ideals. The Bible is, is not outdated, folks. It's, it's, it's never, you know, it's always, it's always good to remind you that the Bible is the number one best-selling book in all of recorded history for good reason. Okay, we need to study the Bible more and not watch Rowling's incredibly stupid movies. That's the reality, folks. Yeah, I know it's tough. I know it's not popular. I know it sounds crazy. Dr. Ott, you've lost your mind. You really believed that Satan was, was real? You believed that Satan and, and boogeymen exist? Yeah, folks, they do. Absolutely, they do. Don't play with fire. Turn away from it. Okay, so... That's the that's the reality. As we go on next week, again, we'll have author William Ramsey. Uh, we'll probably open up the phone lines, at least in the, the second week, and let you ask questions. You can, again, order the book if you want to have the book before we start talking to the author. It's next week, it's uh, when we begin. The book is, again, is called Abomination, Devil Worship and Deception in the West Memphis three murders case author's name is William Ramsey again I haven't read the whole book yet I've I I do I have the ability to speed read so I I've read uh, almost a half of the book speed reading and then you go back and just outline parts of it I mean this this is a I mean it's incredibly well documented what's going on here and why uh, again it's not just West Memphis, folks. This this is a, a, an epidemic, a cancer that's that's at the root of of America's problems. It really is. I I would again. I just I just hope and pray that America starts throwing aside these practices. Why Why is it that Halloween has become more of a popular ho- holiday or holy day? Even there's been more money spent on Halloween than second only to Christmas, for heaven's sakes. Why is that? Why is it that that um, the decadence of America is kind of following the pattern of money spent on Halloween candies and Halloween parties and costumes and decadence and inversion? Why the homosexual agenda is going crazy? Folks, we're all sinners. The Bible's very clear on that. We all are human. We all make mistakes. There's not anything more egregious than murder, especially those of little children. But you see, there's <laughs> when you start getting into these pagan rituals, you start experimenting with homosexuality, with lesbianism, with Huma Abedan, the the high priestess of the Islamic witch that's Hillary Rodham Clinton's bed pal or good good uh, woman girl pal. I mean, folks, this is this is what's happening. I, all I can do is say this is the sickness. Do we want a cure for it or not? Do we want to have a remedy for this? Uh, or do we just ignore it and keep going down the slippery path? That's the that's the question. Again, there's only one remedy for this, and this is turning to the antithesis of the darkness, turning to the light of the world himself. Now, that's as simply as I can state it. That's the answer. It's worked for hundreds of people I know, maybe as many as a thousand 
it's a it's it's a marvelous thing to see a former Satanist come to the light. It really is amazing to see the changes made in their lives. And I've seen it. I've witnessed it. Folks, next week, Abomination with William Ramsey. Devil Worship and Deception, the West Memphis Three Murders. That's, that's a wrap tonight, folks. We'll see you next week. Be well. Be safe. Yeah. Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. We'll be right back after this message. This is Barbara DeLong, host of Nightlight Radio, inviting you to join me on a cosmic journey, exploring a metaphysical montage of spiritual material, covering everything from the mundane to the magical. UFOs to unicorns, and everything in between, including spiritual readings for those who seek enlightenment. Let Nightlight provide you with equal measure of light, love and laughter, insight, wisdom, and inspiration. Monday nights, 10 to 12 p.m. Eastern, right here on Studio B, Revolution Radio, at freedomslips.com. Who are we? Where do we come from? Are you curious about the origins of the human race? Join me, Gavin McCall, and a variety of guests on Ancient Humans, where we decipher world events, explore scientific